Well, well, PM Rants is miles behind on a topic on the internet. Surprise, surprise, sir fucking prize. In my defense, it was around Christmas time. Naturally, I spent time with family, and I was just finishing up the Stanley Parable review. Which, if you haven't seen, the link is in the description below. Ha <laughs> ha, shameless plug! But almost everyone, whether they wanted to or not, has gotten the news that in the latest Overwatch comic, Tracer is now officially gay, sir. I hope that name catches on. I'm making it trending on Twitter. Now, before I continue with this video, I just need to clarify that the majority of people, including myself, reacted to this twist like this. Good on you, Blizzard. Now, would you mind buffing Sombra, please? Now, that was the majority reaction. Obviously, not everyone agreed to this. There was, of course, an adverse reaction to it with a little bit of backlash, you know, from fundamentalists and socially awkward neckbeards who had their head cannon destroyed. And, of course, bigots of all shapes and sizes. But not the bigots that you would think, and not the bigots that are targeted in this video. The extremely loud and extremely regressive thinking group of people led by the likes of Mr. Jonathan McIntosh and his merry little band of social nymphomaniacs, because only people like them would react to news that Blizzard's turning their mascot of their blockbuster new franchise, a strong, lovable female protagonist, into a bastion of LGBT representation, and then go like, well, that's... It's good, I guess, but it's not exactly what we wanted. It's actually very much what you wanted. You wanted a game with a diverse cast of men, women, and machine? You got it. You wanted LGBT representation? You got it with Tracer. But it's not enough for you? Are you people just never satisfied? Do you want Junkrat and Roadhog to go to pound town on each other because there's plenty of Rule 34 out there in the web? Blizzard doesn't even have to make it canon. Let, let's see what Mr. McIntosh has to say. You know, Blizzard, maybe don't make your first openly lesbian character in Overwatch be one that's specifically designed for the male gaze. Sadly, games and comics characters consistently design their gay female characters so their straight male fans can also find it, quote, totally hot. It should go without saying that queer women do not exist for straight men. The comic book and gaming industries must have missed that memo. So let me get this straight. You're not satisfied because... Because she looks just like a pretty girl! That would be why I said it! Exactly. You were up in arms because Tracer just happened to be... hot. Okay. I mean, did you even read the comic? I mean, there was nothing sexualized or exploitative about it. With it surrounding the holidays and whatnot, it was very conventional for a holiday-themed story. Tracer was trying to find a gift for her girlfriend, and the girlfriend ended up liking it no matter what it was, and they embraced with a kiss. You know, just like people in a relationship do. Because they're people in a relationship. They kiss. You know, I don't think the thought has ever come across Jonathan McIntosh's head that despite the fact that he calls for diversity in media, that he only seems to hang out with one specific group of people that perhaps maybe some women like being pretty. Some women like being sexy. Some women like having sex appeal. Some women want to be feminine, you know, because it's empowering to them and it makes them feel good. It makes them feel attractive. And here you are saying that you're okay with LGBT characters, you're okay with strong female protagonists in media, but as long as they are unattractive. That, that's what the tweets are coming off here. And there are, and just to, just to note, just to note, that there are tons, tons of women, gay and straight, who think Tracer is hot. You know those women exist, right? And here you are saying that people in a relationship, pe fictional characters, in a relationship can't be attractive. That's what the tweets are coming off here. You know, for someone who calls himself a feminist, that's quite possibly the most sexist thing you could have possibly said in that matter. But enough about Macintosh and his plaid laden circle jerk. Let's 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 try to look at this as objectively as possible. Okay? Let's let's dispel the notion that video games are a work of fantasy and people can create whatever people of size, shape, or configuration that they want. That's all out the window. Let's look at Tracer as a real person. Let's pretend 
that Lena Tracer Oxen is a real 26-year-old British time skipper. Now, for most of you who have even seen gameplay footage of Overwatch, never even played it, you would know that Tracer is fast, nimble, and acrobatic, meaning she does a lot of running, jumping, and squats from teabagging the corpses of her enemies. I, I, I'm no scientist, and I don't even claim to be smart a lot of the time. I, I may, I don't know, but that burns a lot of calories, and that tones the shit out of your muscles, especially your thighs and your buns, which means that Tracer's infamous ass would come naturally even if Blizzard was aiming towards a realistic nature with Tracer, which I don't know, they may have, they may have I'm, not, I'm not sure, but even going, toward, even going deeper into the lore of Overwatch, Tracer was a pilot, and you need to be a specific frame, you need to be in tip-top shape to be a pilot, especially with single with single man fighter jets, and she and she was, I think, I'm I'm not sure, but do you think a person of my frame would be able to be a pilot and withstand all of the G forces? Hell to the fucking no! A uh, quick Google search would confirm that. Now let's look beyond Tracer. Let's look at the other heroes of Overwatch to look at things. Zarya, for example, she's big and she's buff. It makes sense because she was a bodybuilder in a past career and she needs to be to haul that huge ass particle cannon all around the map. Roadhog's a big hulking motherfucker with a huge gut, but he's a ruthless survivor. So again, that makes sense in context. What about D.Va and her skin tight jumpsuit? She's only a pro gamer, so she's, clearly she's being sexualized, right? No, not really. In fact, there are a lot of studies and testimonies going around that if you have an active physical regimen, meaning that the more physically fit you are, you can actually get a lot better at gaming because it relieves stress, it provides more dexterity to your fingers, it allows you to think quicker, and D.Va's not just a pro gamer, but she's the number one gamer in South Korea, and it kind of makes sense for her to be physically fit anyway because she joined the military and she needs to fit into that mech suit. I could go on about all the characters, but the point is that the heroes of Overwatch were created to run around, play to their strengths, and kick ass. It has absolutely nothing to do with being attractive. In fact, that's really the only subjective aspect of those characters, regardless if they play the game or not. I mean, if you play the game, that's an entirely different story. But there are some people out there who may not find Tracer that hot, and that's okay. There are some people like Jonathan McIntosh who are attracted to people who are plain and have no depth and have no idea how... Game design, character development, storytelling, marketing, or generally how reality works. But then again, that's fine too, I suppose. Look, I love Overwatch, and I love Tracer too. She's my favorite character. If anything, Blizzard doing what they did just made her more relatable. Like, she's actually a person. A person who's larger than life with a whole lot of spunk. You know, an actual three-dimensional character. Something that Jonathan McIntosh and the likes don't seem to understand. I'm PM Rants, and... Wait. What's going on here? What's going on?! Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I need to give an especially big thank you to Sean Campbell, Sam Peters, Connor Pierce, William Fletcher, Kestar24, Will Stonehouse, Nicholas Blackman, Q Player, Jackson Smith, Mitch Jackson, Jack Gore, Ethan Parker, Coda Sinclair, Mario Mariquin, Rodolfo DeLaurin, you fucking scoundrel, Bon Lanez, Ramona Viking Hansen, Cynical Carlos, Michael Groot, Michael Perry Jr., and Casty. So, I need you guys to do me a really big favor. This was an unscripted video, and I personally think I'm terrible at them, so let me know in the comment section what you honestly think about this kind of format, because uh, a New Year's resolution of mine for 2017 is to get PM Rants back on track, 
and with my year in review and the Patreon reviews uh, that may not see any new videos for quite some time because I like to script them and take my time for them. And with the Patreon request, especially two of them in particular, they're going to take a long time to get through it, considering my work schedule and what I have to do in January, which is the year in review, which is two or three videos I haven't really decided yet. So, let me know what you guys think. Happy New Year, everyone. Hopefully, 2017 will be good for you. Hopefully, it'll be good for me. Hopefully, it'll be good for everyone. But, here's to a good year, everyone. Have a good day. Well, well, P.M. Rance is miles behind on a topic on the internet. Surprise, surprise, sir, fucking prize. In my defense, it was around Christmas time. Naturally, I spent time with family, and I was just finishing up the Stanley Parable review. Which, if you haven't seen, the link is in the description below. Ha <laughs> ha, shameless plug! But almost everyone, whether they wanted to or not, has gotten the news that in the... It's not exactly what we wanted. It's actually very much what you wanted. You wanted a game with a diverse cast of men, women, and machine? You got it. You wanted LGBT representation? You got it with Tracer. But it's not enough for you? Are you people just never satisfied? Do you want Junkrat and Roadhog to go to pound town on each other because there's plenty of Rule 34 out there in the web? Blizzard doesn't even have to make it can- Likes of Mr. Jonathan McIntosh and his merry little band of social nymphomaniacs. Because only people like them would react to news that Blizzard's turning their mascot of their blockbuster new franchise, a strong, lovable female protagonist, into a bastion of LGBT representation, and then go like, well, that's, that's good, I guess, but... Latest Overwatch comic, Tracer is now officially gay, sir. I hope that name catches on. I'm making it trending on Twitter. Now before I continue with this video, I just need to clarify that the majority of people, including myself, reacted to this twist like this. Good on you, Blizzard. Now would you mind buffing Sombra, please? Now that was the majority reaction. Obviously not everyone agreed to this. There was, of course, an adverse reaction to it with a little bit of backlash, you know, from fundamentalists and socially awkward neckbeards who had their head cannon destroyed. And, of course, bigots of all shapes and sizes, but not the bigots that you would think, and not the bigots that are targeted in this video. The extremely loud and extremely regressive thinking group of people led by the 